Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin starting on the medium time frame with the bullish scenario where we're looking for a 5 wave impulsive structure to the upside where wave 4 is finished and we are now looking for a final 5 wave structure to finish wave 5. The most common target area for wave 5 is between 46.1k and 55.6k and if we then zoom in this is what we're going to be looking for. Wave 4 finished after a WXY with a triangle in Y, making this the low for then the beginning of an impulsive structure where wave 1 is finished. The most common target area for wave 2 has been tagged between the 0 0.5 and the 786, as you can see over here. And with the current low, the usual minimum target for wave 3, the 1.618 trend based fib extension taken from the low to the high of 1 to the current low here, is sitting at 51k. The invalidation of this scenario is this low over here and something that is important to mention is the high of this wave one because if we look at the first impulsive structure to the upside here in this wave one the highest amount of volume is in the final move to the upside. This is quite typical for a wave C and something you don't see too often in an impulsive structure. The only way you can get the highest amount of volume in the final leg of an impulse is if wave 5 is extended where wave 1 and wave 3 are quite similar in size and wave 5 is then the extended wave which therefore carries the highest amount of volume but an extended wave 5 is not too common so it is something that I will keep my eye on. If we then zoom into this wave 2 on the lower time frames, then this is what we're looking for, a WXY scenario, the end of 1, looking for 2, continuation to the upside. Wave W in this scenario is then a flat structure, 3 wave A, 3 wave B, 5 wave C, end of W. And then we have the white X and the white Y. Now what you can also see is that I have the yellow count, W, X, Y, a little bit of a stretched corrective structure in wave two, which also time-wise can still work. Preferably, however, the yellow wave Y then finishes before the 4 fib time, which is sitting on the 11th of January, 1 p.m. Central European time. Also, the low of the yellow wave Y is at the 786 Fibonacci, taken from the low to the high of one, which as you can see is in confluence with the box here between 43.8k and 44.1k. The reason why I have the WXY in yellow on my chart is because it is quite difficult to count a nice three wave structure in the white wave Y here because we have a flat and in W X over here and then this wave Y has to be a zigzag in this case but it's not easy to count a nice zigzag in here so that is the reason why just in case I have the yellow count as well. Now currently price is testing resistance, the blue box here that I have on my chart sitting between 46.6k and 46.8k and you can also see the vertical lines on my chart, these are FIP times of course taken from the low to the high of 1 to compare 1 in time with wave 2 in time and preferably time wise at least as well, this would be the low and we would be looking for continuation in this bullish scenario. If we then zoom out and we look at the bearish scenario, then we're looking for a finished 5-wave structure, where wave 5 is already in, finishing between the 1.618 and the 1.236 Fibonacci, taken from the high to the low of wave 4. If we then zoom in to the final move to the upside in this wave 5, then we have this ending contracting diagonal. Wave 4 ended over here with a WXY where now in Y we have a zigzag instead of a triangle making this the low and after this low we have to then start counting a 5 wave structure and then a zigzag wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now in an ending diagonal all of the waves has have to be zigzag structures right and that is a bit of a problem for this wave two over here so we can count the zigzag in one in three in four and in five but this wave two over here is not really nice in this wave two we then either have to look for a wxy double zigzag but we encounter a bit of a problem because a double zigzag should be a sharp corrective structure not a sideways corrective structure where wave y finishes below wave w and also wave x preferably does not touch the 0 0.7 Fibonacci which as you can clearly see has been touched all the time. So that is lowering the probabilities for this particular scenario. We could end wave 2 over here after this zigzag but then you can see that your wave 3 is going to be enormous which therefore also lowers the probabilities of this particular scenario. 
the invalidation of this scenario is price taking the high. If you then look at this move to the downside, if this is the high of your five and you're looking for impulsive continuation to the downside, then this move over here has to be your wave one, followed by a three wave structure in two, where the common target for two again is between the 05 and the 786 taken from the high to the low of wave one, where then you want to see impulsive continuation afterwards. Now it is important to note the white box that I have on my chart over here for this wave one, because a wave one that can consists of one candle is not preferred. Usually a wave one should be a nice structure to the downside where at least you have a couple of candles that provide structure to counter wave one. But in this case, it's basically one 15 minute candle, which lowers the probabilities as well for this particular scenario. If we then look at the CVD divergences, then with this drop to the downside, price developed a bullish CVD divergences over here, higher low in price, lower low on the CVD where the target is this high. And then more locally, when price started ranging, we also created a bit of bullish CVD divergences with the counter CVDs here being invalidated while price was moving on top of this support resistance area, right? We climbed back above the support resistance, bullish CVD divergences, invalidated high probability to move to the white box so if you then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios then currently over here on the low time frame we have higher probabilities for price moving towards the upside we have the bullish cvd divergences and also over here with the bearish scenario the wave two is very very awkward right and this being a wave one to the downside and a one two and then a wave three is also not a typical wave one that you like to see it doesn't invalidate a wave one, it's just lower probabilities as the higher probabilities wave ones would be a bit of a structure to the downside. What we're going to do is of course observe the reaction here at resistance and if price can reach the 886 Fibonacci taken from the high here to the low which is sitting at about 47.4k then the probabilities really increase for price to move towards the upside. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the CVD and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye-bye.